Hello, let's talk just a bit today about humility. Have you ever wondered about the role of humility in, in our lives? <laughs> I never appreciated fully the meaning of humility until, well, many years ago, teaching at Mount Union, uh, a student put me in my place one day. He, uh, <laughs> he failed to show up for, for class, and when he came uh, to the class the next day, I said to him, uh, George, you missed my class yesterday. And he said, no, not at all. Well, it was at that precise moment that I began to learn something about uh, what we might call <laughs> humility. Humility, yes. Well, humility comes in, in, in many ways. Consider it in, in a literary framework with regard to uh, some writing that I've tried to do over, over many, many years. When my first book was published, I was thrilled each time the Macmillan Company sent reviews of it to me. All were evidence that the book was being read. It was a textbook, and um, it, it just I just enjoyed so much getting the reviews that were in the various academic journals and so on. Books being read, and that influential readers are eager to comment on it, and they were commenting positively on its quality and literary achievement and textbook worth. Oh, that was good. And then there was one exception. Boy, did I learn humility from that one. I received a copy of a review that really put a damper, a large damper, on such flights of uh, satisfaction. Do you know what the reviewer said? He wrote this in a letter to the publishers. And what he said was, <laughs> quote, the cover is very nice. That's it. That, that's, it. that's all he said. Not one word about what was inside. The cover was very nice. Yes. Well, very good. So you go along at any rate, and you and you continue writing, and you and I've been freelancing my writing all all the time, and enjoying it very much, and having a a good time with it. And, but you remember the times that your manuscripts are not accepted. Oh my goodness. And they come back, and the ones maybe that you've worked on the hardest of all, and yet you send them off to Esquire or the Ladies' Home Journal or to some other magazine, and it comes back with a form rejection slip. That's one thing if you get a form rejection slip. And one of the basic rules is that when you send in a manuscript, you always enclose a self-addressed return envelope in case they don't want it. And secondly, that they, in turn, do not mess up your manuscript if they don't want it. In other words, they're not going to buy it, why then they don't make any marks on the paper, yes. Well, they just enclose a little form rejection slip. However, did I learn humility? I learned something about writing, too, very much so. When I decided to write an article and send it to a family magazine discussing the traditions of Easter, and the fact that the date of this significant Christian day varies. The date of it does vary, determined by the time of the first full moon on or after March 21st. And I thought, well, this would be kind of, it's, it's an ironic situation here. It'd be something I could do a little article on, the, the determination of the Easter date and how it came about. Now, how am I going to get started? Well, I've got to get the editor's attention, of course. I want to get the reader's attention. So I decided to use a very catchy phrase that would take care of it. And I, I started off the article with have you ever wondered how the Easter Bunny knows when to make his annual trip? I thought, oh, that'll be great. That'll get it. It's a family magazine, so it appealed to the youngsters, too, to start it off that way. Well, I had about 2,000 words in the article altogether. Worked on it for several weeks, got it just right. Off I sent it to the, an editor in New York. And I awaited, oh, I knew it would be a sure acceptance and a nice check. But instead... <laughs> I learned a lesson in the art of how to start articles. Oh, yes, the articles that uh, editors will not buy. Remember the opening sentence right there on the first page, so neatly typed, quote, Have you ever wondered how the Easter Bunny knows when to make his annual trip? Well, the manuscript came back to me. And in the margin of that neatly typed page, in big, fat pen and ink across the the space on the side of that question, the editor had written, no, <laughs> exclamation point. <laughs> Have you ever wondered how the Easter Bunny knows when to make his annual trip? No. <laughs> the editor was telling me, no, I never wondered. doesn't bother me at all. And uh, 
I'm quite humble when I reflect on that experience. Of course, I learned something, namely that uh, I had, and I still have much to learn about writing. I'm still trying, and I'll keep on risking humility again. <laughs> and if you're still with me, well, well, then I got away with it for a little bit. I mean, after all, this is uh, a while with Lyle, and I hope you're still with me. See you next week.